Hello, hello, this is Irene with Soga Talks. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. I think by now, many of our followers know where to find Soga Talks, okay? So please, please follow us on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on YouTube, and on major podcasting platforms, all right? We're working really hard, bringing the best and the brightest. And as you probably know, or if you're new to the show, we do discuss artificial intelligence, automation, the new way of working, future of work, uh, lots of topic around cloud, around uh, metaverse sometimes, NFTs at some point. So we're covering broad set of topics, but most importantly, we're bringing the experts, the leaders to your attention, and they're so generous with their time, with their experience and expertise to give us some tips how to succeed, how to adapt technology the right way. So excited today because Carl Swanapol here with us. Carl, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. How are you? I'm doing incredibly well. We're going to talk about what you do and broader uh, and broader ideas of your entrepreneurial experience with marketplaces, with gig economies. Please shed some light. What do you see happening out there with freelancing, gig economy, creator economy? Why you do what you do? Sure. Well, I mean, to summarize it, it's the future. Even today, nearly a third of the global workforce are freelancers. Um, in the next four years, McKinsey predicts that more than half of the US workforce will be freelancers. So, you know, it's already a, a big trend and, and it's definitely continuing. We also see like, for example, um, Generation Z uh, much more, uh, you know, I, I think in, in the creator space than, than ever before. Um, so I think it's a very exciting way of, of work. Um, it's a great way for people to kind of reclaim freedom and flexibility. Um, and ultimately, you know, I, I started my journey as a freelancer and my, I'm passionate about um, changing uh, and improving the industry for the better. Exactly. Because, OK, let me play some kind of devil advocacy over here for a moment in terms of setting up this space. OK, I understand the value. Maybe our audience understand the value. But still, it's important to kind of put that distinct uh, pointers, you know, full-time employment used to be the kind of the way to work, the way to live, all right? Not the case anymore. Even in the roles, in the professions that used to be more, I would say, defined, all right? So right now we look everywhere, you know, marketing, development, software engineering, you name it, right? Web development, so many areas that just blossoming because of the flexibility, because of the digital economy and the platforms that are available, all right? So let's just start right there. Carl, how do you see this complex professional world taking it all in, okay? A, comfortable, a company comfortable hiring for freelancers? What do you see? What kind of pain points you still think out there? Yeah, sure. I mean, everything has its pros and cons. Um, there are certainly advantages uh, to, you know, a traditional job over something like freelancing. But personally, I think on the balance, um, the advantages of freelancing are, are far um, stronger than than any sort of disadvantages. Um, and I think to a, to a degree, you have to kind of choose between um, you know, your, your, your um, comfortability with risk um, and uh, freedom and flexibility, because ultimately becoming a freelancer is probably higher risk than um, just kind of going into a traditional um, employment. But everything in life is a risk. You know, I mean, you, you can't really avoid risks and, and ultimately fortune favors the bold. Um, and you can achieve so much more and go so much further, I feel, um, it, you know, as, as a freelancer. And it's certainly not for everyone, but I think it's for a lot more people than, you know, who currently realize um, that, that it's for them. Fantastic. You know, hearing this from someone like yourself, I know you're child entrepreneur. Can I call you this? Or this is not <laughs> acceptable, meaning that you exited your first venture at the age of 15? I did, yes. You don't hear these stories every day, really. So can you tell us, please, how did you get where you are right now, CEO of Revalencer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So it kind of all started um, when I was 13 years old, and I I just decided um, that, you know, school formal education just wasn't really for me and that I wanted to be my own boss. Um, so I immediately kind of took steps to work towards that. So uh, just started by Googling how to make money online, um, found freelancing platforms, kind of started there selling some some skills that I had taught myself um, 
you know, mainly uh, first design and then web development. Um, and then from there, I realized that the existing freelancing platforms that I was on, in my opinion, back in 2014 were uh, massively outdated. Now, actually, they haven't changed anything to the present day other than, you know, a fancy rebrand and a name change here and there. Um, but, you know, it's, essentially, I decided back then that these platforms just weren't serving freelancers right. So I decided to start my own platform at the age of 15, um, which ultimately I ran for a few months, got it to a few thousand users, um, but was ultimately forced to sell it because I, I couldn't have a PayPal account at that age. Um, and PayPal kept on locking my accounts and I couldn't unlock them because I had to prove I was over 18, which I, I, I couldn't do. Um, so ultimately I was forced to sell it and I sold it just before my 16th birthday.